retail uh, development. And so what we've done is look at the adjacency of those things and how they, they work best to, to give the city a lot of flexibility to look at some revenue generating opportunities possibly for the city, how these are laid out, and make the best efficient use of the program elements that we have so that we're not uh, duplicating any elements and that we're getting the most bang for the buck for what we do build. So there's a lot of multitasking spaces and elements going on in this thing. As a means of orientation on this plan, the wetland is up top, north is straight up. So here is the street that comes from City Hall. Uh, this is the new retail street from the master plan. All the yellow here is residential, all the red is mixed use, and obviously Center Lake. What you see on the screen behind me is an aerial perspective drawn from the retail street. And so go, going into that um, very quickly, and you'll see this better in your, in your handout, what we have starting from this residential street, because every good space, every good public space has a beginning and an end. So we have transition spaces as, um, as we move around the park. Obviously there's going to be emphasis in the mixed use area, um, but we have a lot of projections and connections all the way around the park, because obviously it's a circle, so technically it's a line that has no beginning and no end. So what we've done is provided those punctuation points as we go around. Uh, what we have, the, the, the most familiar thing to you probably is the community center slash farmers market, which would be up in this quadrant that has the amphitheater um, space, the sloping lawn next to that. As we move around the south, we have a, a flexible lawn space. We have the boat dock for the chicken boats, uh, boat house, um, the children's play area, two concession buildings and restroom building, which we'll talk about in a moment. Then we have the family area. And on the main retail street, we've located the wet deck because that's the uh, prime uh, attention-getting street that's going to have most of the traffic from a pedestrian standpoint. Uh, we moved the retail, the restaurant parcel to this area. And right now it's a placeholder, but we're showing the building in there about 3,000 square feet. Next to that, we have what's affectionately known as the Jimmy Buffett stage. Uh, and it's flexible lawn, and it also has some stadium seating with it. And then on the, what we call the Civic Street, which connects City Hall to the park, we've located the other feature fountain, which we talked about last time, that helps um, not only as a civic identity element as we get enter this point, um, but also provides that kind of punctuation as the end of the civic area. And then as you can see in the land use plan, all the land uses then become residential. So what we have added to this in order to make offer a lot more program for the people who were visiting as well as living nearby. Um, from the previous plan, this was mostly just sloped. And we've reconfigured a lot of the retaining walls from the previous plan. So that we've added a dog park, a very small dog park here that helps serve not only the residents, but anybody who's able to come um, down to the park for the day. And then from that point, we've also added kind of a bioretention area to treat that um, water before it goes into the lake. And then this edge of the lake as it moves back around to the amphitheater is very much like it was before. It goes through a, a more of a native planting, canopy tree, shaded walk, very passive park experience back over to the community center. One of the things that we did, um, it was some question last time on the monumental stairs at the end of the street, was a uh, quite a a large expression, um, a lot of concrete brick stairs and everything. And really the, the, the emphasis for that was to be able to get people more for a, um, a punctuation at the end of the street and to be able to make the grade up because as we're sloping this lawn up at 3%, we get to about an eight foot berm at the top. So people have to be able to get up and over from the sidewalk. So. And as we talked about in the last meeting, uh, that's an expensive uh, element. So when Chris and I talked about it, it was how can we still allow people to get up top there, but the city really doesn't need, the park really doesn't need that expensive of an expression 
uh, for vertical circulation, which is basically all it was. So we looked at that, redesigned it so that there are no handrails, so we've eliminated that cost. There are no retaining walls or feature walls at all, so it's all at grade, so we've graded it out. Um, haven't used really any, any more room, and we've, the other thing that we've done for uh, equality of access, so we've added uh, an accessible ramp at 5%, so we don't have handrails requirement as well. And you can see, so it kind of switches back up the slope. The really cool feature about this is the, the potential option that if we've already, we're already up in the air eight feet, we're almost high enough that we can uh, take advantage of this wetland link, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, um, adding this, this feature to it. Um, so then as we move back around to the amphitheater, we've realigned the shape of the, um, the, at the circulation out here by extending the original retaining walls, bless you, um, out a little bit farther. We haven't changed the length or any of the cost or configuration of the retaining walls with the exception of expanding it out so that we would now have a very large flat area all the way around to this point with the exception of two small steps around this amphitheater because the steps that we had in there before were really eating up pretty valuable real estate that we needed to fill up with program and have very flexible. So we've, we've done that and what I'd like to do is take you into uh, the project a little bit more. Great, great question. The re retaining wall starts here. It comes underneath this boardwalk structure, which hides the RCP pipes, equal as equalization pipes that connect the lake to the wetland. And then it comes along this edge. And basically, everywhere you see blue is a retaining wall all the way around to that okay. side. The engineers have designed this that it has a freeboard fluctuation. That means when you do get a storm event, I think it's 25 a year, right. the water stages up to about eight inches below the finished grade of this promenade. Right. So the only thing that's really going to go underwater are these amphitheater steps. Okay. And that's a 25 year, 24 hour storm event. It stages up and then they've calculated that it will drain out to the wetland within 24 hours. Okay. That's, that's, that's right. From my understanding. It's, it's a, a storm that has the probability of happening every 25 years. And I'm not an engineer. I have not played one on TV, so I could not <laughs> technically answer yeah, that question. I think what he's asking is we've got these big storms that, that filled up the sod farm. Uh, what's, that, what's something like that going to do? That's exactly where I was called. One that's flooded the sod farm. A 20 year storm, I'm not worried about. The 100 year one, I'm a little bit more concerned. When the drainage out falls from the center right. into the, the well, it should make its way to the water creek and out. Okay. Like just it's not, it's not a contained base. It will okay, so it make yes, its way up. Yeah. So, so unless, it's, unless the econ backs up in the sweet water and backs up into this, and we, we'll have and we've got a bigger problem. Yeah. 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 Right. So uh, that one uh, goes up behind the, uh, the, the Evans building in the old downtown. And then from that one, we have that out wall that goes into that creek that they cut, which then leads across the street to Sweetwater, which then goes you know, in between uh, our community center and uh, the pond. That's like so the beginning of the So it's not except for those couple steps there. And, but we had a, I was just saying, we've had some serious rain events here. You know, we say 100 years storm, 25. We've seen them all. It seems like the last four or five years, you know? All right, so that's good. So we can drain out of that water. We're not going to flood all the time. What's the word that really just about the outpost? It's up like right in front of the embassy. Well, so it's off the map. Um, it'll, it'll make its way under here, through here, up this wetland, and out this way. Okay. And I'm asking that because, yeah, over the 20 years, you know, we had a 
bigger storm in our backyard and flooded the city streets. They came in and made the outflow just a little bit bigger. So now it goes down there and it didn't flood the streets, but it flooded the backyards and we rerouted it a little bit. So there's there's room to make corrections if, if we get it wrong. Well, something I would tell you is even when Tropical Storm Fay came through a few years ago, yeah. even those residents who live along Sweetwater Creek, there were, we experienced no problems. So there's no plenty of capacity to get the water out as long as there's no block in the creek itself. So. Okay. Right. If I yes. remember those pipes that are going in front of that amphitheater are pretty big pipes. They're big. Like 40 inches, I think. Three of them. Good question um, as far as the function of it. One thing that we did, the change that we did make, the step of the retaining wall actually started from this point, came into about where the restaurant is, and then started um, about where these the playground is and went that way. So it, this, the usable flat, largest flat area was actually smaller. So what we did going to do put this much investment in was to maximize that space because the the these will be underwater so there was no point in having that so that was the, the gist of our uh, expression there if you look at the screens um, behind what I wanted to talk about is the approach to why we reconfigured the plan the way we did so each one you can see the lake in the center the green dash circles represent the major park elements and then you see the arrows of influence, or we call uh, interjections, into the park coming off the radial streets um, around it. So diagrammatically, each one of those streets moves through a major uh, focal point uh, element. So uh, we're spending money there. It's getting very high visibility. It, those are always at intersections. And that's obviously where a lot of uh, activity happens on the streetscape. This shows um, kind of what I call experience zones. Uh, the orange are the major interjections into the park, as we talked about. We've got the fountain in the, um, the lower left. The middle is the wet deck. And then the large orange bar to the uh, middle right is the boathouse. Um, you can see the uh, other areas, um, which, are, which, which we really deem them as what this what park really has an opportunity to be is the interaction, the living room for the city. So these are all kind of, we've kind of classified them as social spaces. So you have the dog park, which is a very informal sort of, uh, uh, very informal, it's not only animals interacting, but people as well. So it's a very neighborly sort of thing to do. Um, and we've got the bioretention, and then we get to the civic fountain, that's obviously a uh, much more civic expression of interaction. It's next to what we call kind of a, a musical uh, social space that is connected to the restaurant. So there's you know music and food, nice connection there. Uh, certainly we have the, the restaurant itself. The wet deck is, is next to the family area. And again, that has um, a lot of opportunities. So if the wet deck, the pop jets, whatnot, is turned off, that space becomes a lot more flexible to use with the family what we call the family area, the lawn area. Uh, and, and that has really become almost literally the front porch, and you'll see that design element in, in just a moment. What we've done to, because we have some code issues with the bathrooms um, required for the wet deck, the original thought was to keep those in the community room, but that would push the wet deck within 200 feet of this building, which really programmatically doesn't work because this is really your, your money shot. This is where the, the identity, where everybody's going to get the pictures taken. This is going to be uh, you know, the big marketing piece. So what we did is we've got a coffee shop and a restroom building here that serves not only the family area, satisfies the wet deck component, but also is adjacent to the playground. So it's right in the middle and serves um, you know, a pretty good third of the park. With and its how, how large is that restroom area? Because we had a whole debate about that five years ago. Well, what's required for the wet deck is that you have um, one unit, fixture unit, per 
gender. So what, what I've done is, is allowed for a building. It's a, and we can, this can be a prefab structure or it can be a uh, custom, but that's uh, accounting for three individual rooms. So it's 24 by 15, roughly. And then it's we, only going to be three restrooms in that whole room of the park area. Right. And technically, that's all that's required. Now, if you want to... Well, what, what's required and what's needed are all these two different things. Well, it's true. The rest, the, the rest of the patrons of the restaurant will have that. There will probably be some in the community center. Um, but again, it's just, we, you know, this can grow if it needs to. What we were trying to do was... Um, well, because the restaurant may not be there. I mean, the restaurant's there as a place. True, for now. It but may, the, well, no, you say for now, it may not ever be there. That's what the discussion we're having. It's okay. That, that could be, uh, you know, some type of an open area. It could be some type of a tented area. It could be other things. So I wouldn't, in my personal opinion, rely on there being restrooms there. I would, you know, this is the same discussion we had five or six years ago. Can't have one or two public restrooms on the public park, you know, with an amphitheater and, and, and other things. I, I, I think the facilities need to be there to accommodate the public that's going to be there. Okay. Just my personal. Well, opinion. when we have a, an event, we'll have porta bodies on the right? Or do we have to plan to have permanent facilities for for an event? I think for a, a normal day, weekday, you know, that's probably fine. But right, then you get the weekends. I mean, look at look at what happens right now at uh, Friendship Park. And they have they have four or six over there, and you know, there's kids standing in line all the time. I mean, and that's just one little park. So that's one of the Yeah. And it's more good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep. And then whenever we design the building, no offense, Drew, it can't look like the bunker that we have over there in Friendship Park. I mean, it's got to be appropriate to this. Everything that gets put in here, I mean, if you think it's good, you know, go ten levels up, and you know, then it'll be acceptable. Okay. Not design. I mean, I'm this just with, has to. Uh, Lake Eola, they've got that big restroom out there. Yes. That's probably overkill for what we need, but there are times when that thing is yes. backed up out the door. But that's for these big events. Oh no, well, events of course you bring in, but I'm just I'm just saying that I've we've seen it on uh, Farmers Market Day, or just on any regular day that the kids are in the park on Saturday and Sunday. There's always a line of little kids, and little kids gotta go, and little kids gotta go. Yeah, that's probably a good benchmark. Is the Farmers Market? What do they have for restrooms out there? Four. That's at the uh, park. We're assuming that the, the farmer's market building, if you do the building, that would have restrooms in it. And, and we certainly, there, we have the, the room to be able to expand that as well. Right, but again, you know, and I'll wait until you, you get up there. Okay. How many do we need later on? I, mean, I, I don't know what we need, but if they're saying three, we need six. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know. Well, we have a heavy crowd. How many heavy crowd? Well, well, forgetting well, the, the events, I'm just thinking the kids in the park at the splash zone. Well, I'm just saying, at the worst case, you've got an event going on, you got the kids in the park, and assuming some day will be a restaurant, all the should retail is done. I mean, we have three, what do you think? It's probably ten. You know, you know, when we have a three-day country here, we've got 16. Right. 16 restaurants. That's like a 50,000 person event. And you said it was three per gender? No. Three total. Okay, now mom. What do you think? Three enough? One per gender and a, and a but diaper type or something? But, yeah, but he's he's assuming that there's a good number up in the amphitheater Probably. and the and the other restaurant. So okay, so but we can just keep it flexible. This is Yes. It's okay. just it's the thought as we go forward because there's assumptions being like, you know, when we get up to the amphitheater building. You know, the talk of last time is we have the community center already, so that may become a smaller building with more features. And, and we'll talk about the contents of that building as well. Great. One thing that I want to stress, you know, again in this diagram, is the location of this is to 
maximize its service for the adjacent that's, uses. That's great. Uh, then we have the, the top lot here. How, I'm sorry, how big is the splash pad? The splash pad is 60 by 15. And you'll, you'll see a character image of that in a moment. Is that big enough? 900 square feet? Well, these are really not... Um, the, the shape of it is what we're working with. It's a very linear uh, piece. And, and again, you can have splash pads that are circular, 25, 30 feet across, or smaller, because really it, it becomes a, an activity magnet and what we've done is tried to maximize the perimeter of that so that it has exposure. About 60 the, feet is a big problem. Right. And, and that's really, if you look at the, the, the configuration of it, we've maximized the distance that we have for the park. In, in relationship with, you know, Winter Garden, you know, they've got that, that big one down the center going back to the old train station. Mm -hmm. you know what size that is? That's probably... There's a fountain in the middle of that. Right, so they got the big range. And, and right. I, like, I heard what you said earlier about when you make the pad dry, it becomes space. Event and space. that's what they do out there. Yes. When the pad is dry, you know, they've got all that space, which is nice. You want to zip line across that maybe from the splash pad out to the end of it? I'm sure Mr. Cavanaugh will gladly install that for us. You're not supposed to read ahead. That was that's what we're doing. Um, so, so <laughs> right. how about what, what we've works. done? We I'm, I'm just trying to get relations. Yes, sir. I understand. And I, and I appreciate that. I, I kind of want to get to the, uh, the meat of what we're talking about. So, again, the diagram of this is how we located these new pieces. So we've, we've kind of slid a lot of the program a little bit farther north um, with the, the kids' play area. And, all, and this is about 6,000 square feet, which was what was recommended before. So we've carried that size forward. We've added a few shade sail structures that uh, are double-sided, so they serve not only parents watching their children, but also there's a seating component on the promenade side. As you can see, one of the, the, the big differences, changes that we made from before, is we've actually created a waterfront promenade so that you can actually get next to the water um, if you choose to. All right, we don't have to worry about those little wet steps where they're wet, right, exactly. they're dry, kids jump into the lake. Right. And, and, and put like benches along there. Yes, sir. And, and the other thing is if uh, this is about a 12 to 15 foot wide. So it's, if you've been to Lake Eola, that's about a 10 to 12 foot wide walkway that goes around that. So it's, it, it handles a lot of different, and this really becomes kind of a flexible use space so that you can, if you choose to, if there were vendor carts or during park event days, you can do anything that you want to along that. The other great thing about it is it, also, it provides a lot of uh, viewing capacity that if you shoot off fireworks or you have any sort of celebration in the lake, that it provides now quite a bit of lakeside viewing. So we get to the, the children's area. We've got the boathouse, what we call a boathouse here, which is storage and maintenance um, employee uh, spot here. Uh, we've added something, and it's a, it's a small, there's probably a couple of program elements on this plan that could be donated, but what we tried to do, again, is thinking at that level 10, as you had suggested, um, some of the big ideas um, for this. Um, so we'll talk about this kind of feature in a moment. Uh, the one change that we did to the retaining walls is we brought, instead of two levels, we actually only made one level and then introduced a boardwalk element. Instead of it being that small piece that covered the pipes that was originally only in this area, what we did is kind of create a wetland experience over here by having it move through this and then that lower shelf of the retaining wall we planted with Spartina, cypress trees and everything like that. So if there's an event happening in this area, you still have a bypass to be able to get around the lake. So you, you always have continuous circulation around the lake. And it provides a little bit different experience than the rest of this civic expression. One of the, one of the big moves for this in looking to give an identity, to really hang the identity on, was love doing diagrams, so it makes it easy to explain. This is really the, the big idea for the park, is the wetland before was really having its back kind of turned on it. The retaining wall is just 
dropping right down and you know that's wetland over there we can't use it so you know it's out there um, we had this wetland fringe on the side but I thought there was a great opportunity when we were talking through it to really bring that element uh, from Sweetwater Creek which is actually you know the, the wetlands and the river and the water systems are a great asset that's what helps define us as Central Florida so the idea was to be able to bring some of that um, idea and that vocabulary across hence introducing that and that starts making this a lot stronger and really starts pr providing a nice identity for the amphitheater uh, and, it, and it, again, it ties around the lake. So what you'll see in the diagram is the green is kind of the, the natural wetland experience coming through, and it kind of interlocks with the civic uses um, around the lake. And it's got a very civic expression. There's a very clear delineation between kind of a natural and a man-made, the, the civic part of it. Uh, and that really helps strengthen the identity uh, of the park. A very quick diagram on circulation. You can see on the outside the blue is vehicular circulation and the connections back into the neighborhoods and the retail. Then you have the, the bright red, which is the streetscape, what's being built right now, what's already been planned. That's the uh, street side circulation and its connections back into the village. And then the rest of the green uh, really inside the park really shows how porous this park is. There's no dead ends. There's, you, you should be able to move through this park um, and, and have it permeate from the streetscape and get into the park very easy, permeable from most areas. The, really the one area that's not certainly would be the restaurant and the other would be the, the kids area which we've kind of got a hedge planned here so that if you're a parent, it's nice to have children's play area contained a little bit so that, number one, they're not running out in the street, but you know where they are. They're not escaping out, uh, you know, all four sides. Uh, and then what you can also see on, at each, again, at the circulation for the streets, escape, the views at the end of those that all permeate towards the middle uh, of the lake. Now, the fun part, really, is we kind of get down from the aerial view down into the park and see what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is start from this major civic fountain piece and you can see this is a section that's cut through the Buffett stage and this flexible lawn area. And the idea here is that we are again providing the amphitheater seating so if there's a small performance going on there's just enough kind of amphitheater seating but then the lawn behind it provides a very flexible area that can handle larger events and at the same time and you'll see it in the sketch in just a second if the restaurant uh, was here they could have a, an outdoor venue that also is leasable from that area so the lawn has a lot of flexibility and has a lot of uh, not only for private parties and still allowing circulation to get around it but it also accommodates a, a number of different sizes for uh, the Buffett stage. So that's the section of it. There's some imagery along the bottom and then this was a sketch from the street side looking at this fountain feature. What was advanced, thank you, what was advanced before um, that Chris had shown you was the signing package. So what we've done is created, um, as we talked about last time, we're picking up a water feature a little bit. So um, Sight lines are great, but you need to do something vertical to really catch some your attention so that when you're in the car walking down the street, you'll be able to see this from uh, quite a distance. So what we've done is kind of interpreted a little bit of what the, the, the park signage was before that's being used out at the road. These towers just provide a little bit more of a, a nod to the celery. Um, that they've got, they're internally lit just like the other signs are. So what this really becomes is kind of a family of elements that start giving you know unique identities. Um, Are you envisioning those to be that same kind of material that will look around the glass? Yes, it's got the polycarbonate. Thank you. 
I, I would think because this is the main civic punctuation into the park that I would my, my preference is to do brick and then as we get, get an argument from me on that. <laughs> and as we get into that um, you know the, the walkway you can see it from the streetscape changes to match the drawings that we have now uh, and, and a little bit about this um, what's already been developed is a little bit of the tile mosaic pieces so we've used that at the base of the columns we've also lined um, that fountain has a it's kind of a infinity edge so it's overflowing so that's a glass mosaic um, with the kind of the foliage nod to it um, flowing down the side so you know kids could put boats in there and push them around or, or whatever but what it really gives you is a, is a nice clean sort of modernized edge um, to that edge of the park what you can see is um, someone oh, I didn't know I could do this this is great so there's bench seating here um, so that you know there's there, what you need is, is different activities different moments for when people come back to the park so there's quiet places to read it's an iconic piece so you can see people you know obviously getting their picture taken here um, you can see the community the amphitheater farmers market in the background and then here you can see the flexible lawn area that is permeable um, right off the sidewalk into the park um, and then what we've done is use trees to really define the rooms of the park so you get sight lines through it so from a septed crime prevention through environmental design it's very safe because you always have sight lines for long distances through the park there's not a lot of hiding areas in this I could just go on and on um, but I want to show you the other parts of the park Absolutely. You guys weren't here back in 2000. That's all Charlie seemed to want. Yeah. An icon in the park that would be the picture for the cover of the phone. Well, how about the. Uh, back in 2000, the we all had phones. The, uh, the the flash right at the top of the website. Yeah. Yeah. At, at a previous firm, I did, we did the Winter Garden project and the clock tower the city liked it so much it actually became they started using it as the logo on all the staff shirts which was a great uh, it was a great nod um, and again it's bespoke to where it is the, the so trains like uptown has turned into their logo. right and and the, you know I think this has an, an opportunity we find something in here as we advance the design uh, for that the next section as you can see in the um, plan view in the lower right is this area the family lawn area the great opportunity in Florida obviously if, is if we have any grade change that's always a big deal you know engineers and architects alike so what's happening with the grading from the back of this curb to the top of the retaining wall is a 2% slope so we're actually picking up almost two feet of grade through there uh, a foot and a half or so so what we've done is we've picked up um, it's kind of hard to see here I'll, I'll use my, my little hand again here on the center screen for you what we've done is we've picked up um, this is all sidewalk this is a street tree in the background then you can see we've picked up this terrace about 6 to 12 inches and there's a terrace that's defining that space which you'll see in the plan and then we have the lawn area that we've kept flat that has the lawn chest in it and backgammon tables, Adirondack chairs under the trellis or rocking chairs or things like that. And then because we're keeping that flat, but yet the grade is dropping towards the lake, we, we have created a bank of steps along this lakefront promenade so that it creates some informal seating. So that again, if you have events or while you're, and it happens on both sides, and it staggers because as we pick up grade we lose steps but we've also created that on the wet deck side so that if you're watching your child or your grandchild you've got a place to sit while they're running in and out of the fountain how much sidewalk is there after the bottom step this is still the 12 to 15 feet so it's a lot of room for kids running around family family events
in a, in a residential area, but if you look at a retail street, like if you go down Park Avenue or something like that, that gets in the 12 to 15 foot because it has to be flexible enough because you, you'll find out if it's too small very quickly. Yes, sir. And the other thing that we've done for this area is we've put festoon lighting over the top of it, the, string, the lights on the string, so that really punches that out as a very special area. Um, it's a little bit elevated, so again, next to one of the prime um, retail punctuations through the park, that gives that a lot of identity, a lot of activity. Next to that, we have the coffee bar, which is a vendor opportunity, and then the restrooms. And again, that has enough space to be able to uh, accommodate a little bit more. And what we've done here is obviously provided two buildings so that you have room access from the family area at grade directly into the kids' play area so that it's a very flexible um, so ease of circulation use. So if you have small kids and you have larger kids, they can go back and forth between those two. Uh, um, what else do we have in there? It's just chock full of information. And so here we, we have is a sketch at the streetscape looking at the edge of the wet deck. One of the ideas that we had right now um, playing into the character that you had talked about is the buildings um, having an identity for the park is what has been identified before is more of a traditional look, very much like this facility. So what you see to the building to the left side of the picture is a restaurant with a huge wraparound porch that takes advantage of the wet deck. And then the family park lawn area off to the right, and you can see the people along that edge. And there's columns there that hold the festoon lighting, but you can see that there's people sitting on that edge watching the activity with uh, the kids playing in the wet deck. And then what we've done for a vertical element, because every time you obviously drop water vertically, it's a kid magnet, and to get an iconic piece, because water, jumping water, is, unless it's turned on 10 feet high and as big and frothy, is, is not that big of a vertical element to attract your attention. What we've done is at the end of that street is provided, just the one idea is that we have is to use a, kind of a remnant chimney piece, and it's it's, it has the opportunity, much like you've seen Chicago's Millennium Park, that has that video wall that has water coming out of it. That the idea here is that we, on this face of it, that it's much more traditional, the wet deck side of it, it would have water elements in it that would be programmed to spit water out at different levels, do different things, steam, mist, it has lighting effects in it, etc. Uh, the four, and you'll see the foreground element is the, is the curbside, and then you can see the, the young woman walking her dog. She's walking along the streetscape edge. Um, Don't worry, Bobby. You'll, you'll, it'll work. In front of the park. the engineer over there going, hmm. And then, and then this, this is what we have here as we, as, we, as we move around the park. This is the area I was talking about yeah, by... The planners over here are loving it. You've got the engineer over there wondering how am I going to fix it. Again, then vendor opportunities and donations because it'd be a great to have somebody's name on the fountain would be an awesome uh, honor. Uh, here, what we have is a section through the flex lawn that's just south of the farmers market building and north of this. Uh, kind of what we call Boathouse Plaza. And what the section shows is how we've pulled, we've eliminated one of the retaining wall steps, created a larger bench, and we have the cypress trees and the boardwalk moving through that. So what happens to the left side, the flex lawn, is this size accommodates a 60 by 100 tent. So that for the farmer's market, somebody who's having a wedding or winter gala, whatever, 60 by 110 is a pretty large, leasable um, thing. If there's nobody there, you can fit 15 to 20 um, tents for a farmer's market out in that, car shows, et cetera, et cetera. Or it's a, just uh, a nice place to, you know, nice area of respite, not programmed, because the rest of the park actually has a lot going on in it. So it's nice to actually have some areas that are still close enough to the residential and the action, but are unprogrammed. 
And so that's what that shows. The sketch for that is looking at, looking down kind of the boathouse, what we call the boathouse plaza. So you can see the play area off to the left. The, the two large bird structures is one of the things that was in the, uh, the PPS document before. And, and again, what we've kind of rendered them as are those sand... Are, those are fowl, right? Sandhill cranes. That is the idea. And again, some of the idea for that is that, again, it gives... It, the, the wetland idea of bringing that identity across to the children's area really now gives the, the, the play area an identity versus it just being off-the-shelf play equipment. And it teaches kids a little bit about respect for the environment. They'll understand what a sandhill crane is. And on the way here, I actually saw, you know, you see them. I saw two flying overhead. And, and that really is different because if you grew up in Ohio or someplace else, it's a whole different, yeah, it's a whole different animal, pardon the pun. Um, so this is a really a way to help uh, create identity. The other thing, you, you'll see the structure in the middle is the kind of the boathouse storage area. Architecturally speaking, we're staying something very close to um, a traditional motif. Uh, color selection is kind of already, uh, Chris has presented that before. We're staying with things that are uh, uh, pretty bold and then certainly in the drawing it helps to pop that out. Shade sails, again, that happen here act as a transition between that area so that you still have shaded seating for parents, uh, but also queue lines if that boathouse storage has any other flexible use for events that serve this flexible lawn area. Um, you could stage tables under that as well. The large paving area has seating allowed, so um, while it's being used as a flexible play area, open play area, you have places to sit. Um, out of cover. And then the, the large element that happens in the middle, if we turn to the middle screen here, just a little bit color rendition, better. This is, one of the ideas here is that it's almost like a periscope, which adds to something as a complement to what you're going to see on the other side of the lake. Um, it's a way to be able to get that bird's eye view because one thing that you always see in architectural renderings, and I apologize to all the architects in the house, and this could be a donated item. This is not, you're not on the hook for this one. Um, it just it gives you that kind of bird's eye aerial view that um, much like when you go to other places in the country that have great scenic beauty, which this has, to be able to get a bird's eye view and look down on something is actually quite unique. Uh, whether it's char it can, and it also serves as kind of a uh, public art piece um, as well. And I would see this. We talked about this being a donated uh, item. It's not very expensive uh, to do at all, but it's a nice. Um, kind of thing to see. Um, then we have the boat dock that has uh, the chicken boats, future chicken boats. We don't have a sketch of that. Um, you know, it's just a, an eye it's a periscope. So much like a viewfinder on the, in San Francisco or something. Yeah, and you're, you've got a view from 30, 40 feet in the air. So, this, this is a section showing how we, we created an opportunity here on the high end of the amphitheater lawn. So you can see we have eight foot of grade change that we were dealing with anyway, but instead of dealing it with a very large, massive, really um, single purpose entity, which was the staircase with the brick walls and everything else, we rethought that and said, how can we, number one, pull a little bit of money out of that because it doesn't need that big of an expression and at the same time maximize the impact of having that much grade. So we were eliminated the, the handrails by having three steps a landing, three steps in a landing, which by code you don't need handrails for. So code can be your friend. Yes. And then you can see through there we have the, the accessible ramp at 5%. So again, we don't need... Um, handrails for that. So while we were up at around five and a half anyway, what we decided to do is to really make this a great gesture. And you, here you can see the switchback. We continued the switchback all the way through onto a boardwalk element and just let that thing fly into this element. So here you can see at the top, this is the top of the hill out here. So we just kept that grade going up. Now this does go to 8% because obviously as we're starting to get high, we're going to have to have handrails, guardrails anyway. So we 
increase the grade a little bit more so that we can get the perimeter walkway that goes around the lake at street level, we can get that thing to go underneath. Kept the same amount of retaining walls that we had before, we just reconfigured them a little bit closer to be able to, uh, um, you know, and, and then of course they spiral out back into grade. So this was a great, we thought it was a great opportunity with the cypress trees and everything else, you're actually right there next to um, the Osprey Tower, which we would suggest, here's the little rendering of the Osprey Tower, which we would put out next to this edge, because again, that's a great, uh, they happen anyway, they happen in normal snags, you see them on power poles and everything else, but it's a great, really kind of a um, strong idea to be able to bring this natural kind of wetland edge you can see it probably from the periscope and everything else, and it really becomes um, people take ownership of, you know, the lucky osprey who gets to live in yeah, that when spot. They, when they're nesting a weed, can they not be allowed to have a fence or something? No, no. Okay. Osprey is not that kind of, well, it's, it's not the American eagle. eagles, right? Right. I mean, when you go across Lake Jessup, I mean, you see ospreys okay, all over. Yeah. Great. Yes. Uh, this is this this is uh, oh I'm sorry this is a sh this is a shadow just to show you that it's actually getting up there. Landscape architects love playing shadows, just in case anybody ever asks you. So, in a nutshell, that that is the uh, kind of the presentation. And again, just to kind of recap, what we thought was um, very important was to kind of connect instead of cut off the wetland was to bring that wetland uh, expression all the way through and then really provide a series of events through the park, provide that lakefront promenade experience, and then punctuate the park at the major um, levels of interaction coming out of the um, mixed use and residential development. So where's the berm going to be? The, the berm is here. Okay. The, the height of the berm is there and then it slopes, right? Okay. So what is what is the delineation between the amphitheater seating area and the wetland? What's, what's going to keep kids from running into the grass there? Is there going to be a fence or a... This, this is a retaining wall. A wall, okay. Which was there before. Exactly. Okay. Because you're building up grade, so there's a retaining wall around. Okay. Right. That was one thing that Chris said. Don't touch the retaining wall. So I didn't. No, I, I, yeah, I'm more... <laughs> Thinking whether uh, I don't know who is the DEP now or St. John's uh, would have a hiccup with with that interface. Who, who controls the weapons now? St. John's. But it's outside the setback. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're good with it. Okay. There was a time. <laughs> and, and, and the other thing I talked for a moment um, about the farmers market building. Uh, with the team, we went to the farmers, the Winter Park Farmers Market, took a look at that facility, and then in talking with uh, Tom about this, what this is is a very open structure, about 80 by 30, and then there's a small wing off of this that addresses the flexible lawn area. Half of this structure is a porch because that was one of the most um, popular features of the Winter Park farmer's market was they said they could actually rent out that porch that's on the front that of that thing. And, and, it's, and it's very similar and, and yes, Chris, thank you very much for handing those out. If you very quickly, and I know everybody's anxious to flip through every page, but if you go towards the, uh, the back of that, you'll see the community center sheet. And it's very much like winter Park Farmers Market. The back edge of this that interfaces with the stage is all open door. So those big doors will slide open so that if there is an event that needs the interior of this building, it becomes very permeable. Um, but it's basically a, a, a big shell. We have on one end of the building is the restrooms um, kitchen. And there's, you can see in the site plan, there's a loading dock area for that and truck access to be able to get sorry, to the stage. I'm sorry, it's on the it's on the first page, the bottom 
bottom right, yes, sir. Behind the cover, the, the bottom right page is a, is a shot of the interior of the farmer's market. Yes, sir. And then the, there's another image, the second from the top. The image from the top is the inside of the Winter Park uh, Farmer's Market where you can see the very large sliding barn doors. Oh, okay. That uh, Winter Park Farmer's Market is an old depot, right? Train depot? Yes. It's kind of the theme of that area there. Have you thought about any kind of uh, theme that we want to project out of, out of our farmer's market? Well, what well, we've kept... In, in this rendering of what we're showing is okay, so it's going to be a well the doors allow access and a flexibility of the building from a exterior architectural um, identity it's because of its size it really becomes a um, much more of a traditional Oviedo like um, large metal roof and what we've what we've suggested in this uh, is to split the roof shape, so it's not one massive roof, but is actually stepped. We have the, uh, what we're showing on the back is a 30 by 60 stage, very similar to the meat gardens stage. You could actually almost pattern that after what used to be the old fertilizer plant before Hurricane Charlie took it out. You know, that had the big loading dock up in the front, which could be your doors. That had the big metal seams roof. That had the opening of the tire. We'll take a look at that. That's a great idea. I mean, it, it, acted, it blew down during Charlie only the front of it is left standing, but I'm sure there's pictures of the local place. Yeah, but what did that one? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just thinking, you know, because I know when I go to the Winter Park place, it's right on the tracks, and it's got that depot type of uh, ambiance. So on, on that first page at the top, I think at the very top image, you can see a picture of the Meat Gardens stage. That's what Shank sent us. Oh, yeah. That's not the one we got here yet. Just getting to the uh, amphitheater lawn. Yes, sir. You may have said this after I walked out. But, uh, that lawn is now flatter, so it will be more multi. You gave it that bowl effect. That well, well, we did. We gave it a little bit. Only on the edges, really, and it does. It does have a little bit of this concave expression towards the center of that, and then we've kind of ramped it on the sides just to provide a little, you know, natural protection from that edge. Um, and then it ties in the re to the edges of the retaining wall. Um, it's at three percent, and I think before it might have been a little bit steeper, but we still have the same uh, height as we did on the original berm. So the 3% the is, is a very flexible. That, that's a grade that you could put a tent on? Or yes. A lawn chair? If you consider that a lot of the slope across, the maximum allowable slope across any sidewalk is 2%. So we're only actually at 3%. But if you run this thing out uh, 275 feet, you're up 8 feet in the air, roughly. Right. And the stage, and you know, Tom had mentioned this as well, the stage is actually raised up about three feet as well. So we're getting some natural um, height advantage for the amphitheater seating event by adding three feet to the base of this building um, to be able to get up in the air. So the farther you go back, you should still have that um, visibility over the people in front of you. The uh, farmer's market uh, stage area, is that, has that increased since the last time we met? So. Nope, that, that's what has been proposed uh, all along. Okay. We've just incorporated, Tom suggested, incorporated that on the back of a, of a um, much more flexible kind of open building, and the configuration of that was uh, inspired from what we saw and, and talked to at length with Winter Park about how their building functioned.
necessitated the you know the, the, the openness and the in the multi you know yeah. dimensional type of building that we're proposing. It's not nice All right, so underneath that we're picturing that being more like a lack of a better term, a pole barn type of deal. Yes sir. With yep. some green rooms for the stage. Green rooms for the stage are outside the main structure towards the back. We have offices which are tucked into this side. We've got a kitchen at one end next to the loading dock. And then, uh, so, the, so the kitchen, well, the office is here. They may have restrooms. The restrooms could be on either end. But the offices here actually help um, administer the farmer's market building or if there's any event taking place on this lawn because that's one of the things that we found out with the gentleman who runs the farmer's market is security and of the operations of that building, that facility. So being centrally located right, actually helps. Bigger, you could do 10 or 15 tents on that south lawn. Right. Nothing to stop us from doing that. Nope. It's tied to that periscope. And your vicarious thrill is the periscope. In case you're not getting on the zip line. Is that periscope going to really work? It's just, it's like one of those viewfinders, except it has a uh, yeah, larger piece of fisheye lens. Council's input on the dog park addition. That's the first time I had heard no, that. No, I was just into that. I, I, I've got that. Okay. There. Dog park at, at this Here. place? Yeah, we agree. Mm -hmm. It's a new element they've proposed. Let, let's, let's get back to that. Why? You have a massive amount of residential here. You, and, and the other thing is when people come to Lake Yola, um, Park Avenue, any great civic space, the animals are part of that. The dogs are an easy part of that. It's a, it's a different level of social interaction, but what we're trying to do is provide for you know, a complete demographic uh, appeal. So you know, dogs playing together is a very social event. What we've done with this kind of canopy arrangement is there's an overlook that even if you don't have a dog, that's outside, sorry, outside the fenced area. So you can sit here, read a book, get a great shot, you know, of this, uh, of your front porch park, or uh, by massing those two structures kind of together, and there's an image um, in there of, uh, of the dog park kind of sale idea as well, that that's provided shaded seating for people to be able to um, be with their dogs during summer months, the dog what days is, of summer. Dog park. It's very tight. It's not not big at all. The facade is actually um, uh, artificial turf that is designed for pets. Um, has full drainage through it. Um, it's it actually so you have it's, you have a very clean sod panel. It's you have a curved edge, and then you have you know the low fence. Um, it's not big. You know we're not talking about a big um, space here. It's, um, it's just another amenity. It's, it's one more reason for people to come to the park. And it's a very, it, we can send you some more images of this channel site dog park in particular. It's been extremely successful. And uh, it's a great example of an urban dog park. We talked about mud and all that. It's clean and simple and just another activity. How big of a about how big do you think it is? Um, as drawn, that's probably what, 40 the, by Well, the, yeah, the middle is about 30. Yeah. And the longest run is about 80. Just a small area. Yes, ma'am, it's all fenced in. And even in, in a lot of the multifamily projects that are coming online, a lot of those have dog park components to that. There's going to be dogs walking around the park, so it's at least a place where they can mingle together. Mingle together, you know, keep the equal action. Yeah, have the theater line and keep dog Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's just, um, it's, yeah, it's a program. Well, the area next to it that's green, you know, in the center that would be, you know, all those areas, any yeah. green area around would become an ad hoc just, dog park. Can you just run center. around the lake again, starting at the dog park, just quickly for council to change, just to yes, sir. reference. We have the dog park here, and as Chris was saying, there's a 
water is being filtered into bioretention with the retaining walls before it pops into the, the lake. Here's the street that connects to City Hall. So we've, um, we've got the civic fountain expression here that was talked about last time. The affectionately known Jimmy Buffett stage with its flexible lawn area. It, we did uh, keep two banks of amphitheaters sort of seating for that. Uh, the one change that we did make, Councilman, is we took out the stepped retaining walls all the way through this thing or extended, pushed them farther out from the center of the park. And then we have the restaurant parcel here, should you choose to. In the, in the meantime, it could certainly just be an extension of that lawn area. We have the wet deck, uh, the feature uh, plaza, which is on the terminus of the retail street. Right. And the building that you see to the left of the sketch is the restaurant, proposed or potential restaurant that has um, porch seating overlooking that. To the right side of that sketch, what you'll see is the what we're calling the family lawn area, and that has uh, is an elevated plane, so it creates step seating along the two sides. So it's got seating for the wet deck as well as over the lake. Uh, it creates a little bit different experience. We have the coffee bar and restrooms that serve not only this area and the function for the wet deck, but also then serves the children's playground off to this side, and and throughout all of this, we're maintaining the uh, promenade up against the lake. Here we have the boat house um, for when the marina, chicken boat, chicken boat marina comes online. Um, and this, what we call the boat house plaza. And again, it, it serves not only um, in the circulation from the farmer's market at grade, you can walk all the way through to the restaurant. So part of that is a very uh, flexible area. Um, this lawn area, we've kind of got dashed in here, and you'll see it in your plan, is a, accommodates a 60 by 100 tent. So we, we made a change of taking the street trees out in this area and put palms in because you can get maximize the edge of the tent. And if you've ever seen what the tent people do to oak trees, it's to get their tent in that they will hack, the hack other, them. The other point Yes. You know, that's right. And, and we did keep it through here um, to provide not only the circulation to be able to get around if they did have a tent. There is a small walkway that's uh, that, got, that we've accommodated along this edge before it steps down into the sort of wetland feature. But then we made a much more broad gesture of a sweeping boardwalk feature that then also comes over in this area and hides the, the pipes that will equalize to the, uh, to the wetland over here. And then here is the retaining wall, the amphitheater that comes up, the staircase we've minimized, um, and then also created kind of what we're calling the Osprey Outlook, this fly out. Yes. So we already had the benefit of being of almost eight feet up in the air. So we said, gosh, if we can only go up, you know, four more feet, you can actually get a walkway underneath it and make that a really nice feature. And if we've got an Osprey Tower out there, so you're up in the trees you know, very neat uh, expression. Um, and as we come back around, just through a very passive uh, wetland, naturalized edge, until we get back to the dog park. Ah, oh. yeah. About a yeah. Oh, he's going to like the Paris. <laughs> if you look in the sketch, uh, Chris, if you would mind showing that, it's at the Boathouse Plaza. I'm not okay. sure what page number it is. Yep, right, right, right there. You can see the large column feature in the middle. And basically what that is is to be able to get a bird's eye view out over the lake. Um, so yeah, so instead of having just your, your natural you know, viewfinder at eye level, you can actually get it up. So it could become a donor element. It's just a fun sort of thing to be able to bring that kind of bird's eye. Uh, and you'll get a you know, great shot over the wetland as well. It's kind of a unique experience. This is a, this was already proposed, so we. It's part of the infrastructure. The only thing that I did different was I turned the grading towards it so that it made kind of a natural bowl. Right, and then they the elevation 
right. So the actual three percent through here, and that's the sound booth guy with uh, cable tray and grade, so you don't have to tape stuff down or right. all that. Yeah, Chase. Yes. It's fun to work on this project. So what are we working around? That's what we were asking. What are we breaking ground? <laughs> Ryan? March. March? <laughs> I thought it was January. <laughs> I guess we need some level of directives from some level of directive from the commission to continue with um, into design development. And as we move into the design development phase, you know, we'll probably need to come back again and do a presentation because the materials will be refined, we'll be dialing down costs. All those sorts of things. I mean, I've got a very, very broad brush cost guess, um, but I, I don't need more. Okay, yeah, it's it's a, a, we'll, we'll talk later. Yeah, so, but uh, anyway, I, so but yeah, but so, you, make, you know, I, I think it's doable. I do think it's doable. So, all of the farming is really going to go well. Councilman's question March, April, March. March time. Yeah, I am. He's not going past that. To striving or uh, to uh, more sympathy. Are there any problems? Are there any problems? Are there any problems? No, no they're, just, they're just in these full cool blue lakes. Oh, okay. yes. I mean, we're, we're coming through with permits for the infrastructure. We're looking we for permits in for the apartments. Um, on, on Monday, you're getting all the permits, all the building permits for the apartments. So that'll complete the third leg. But it, it's a little bit of a staff has been working extremely hard. Uh, and there's a tremendous amount of coordination. I, I can share Sunday's e emails with you if you like. Yeah. <laughs> so Chris, Tom works 24-7, uh, so it's, it's, it's good that I do as well. This is the idea, 30% concept. Chris? <laughs> What's that? This is like a, you know, I, I see this as kind of a conceptual plan. You want to come back to us at what, maybe a 60%? It'll be 60%, yeah, design development. And we might have... Uh, need to evaluate it and talk to staff or whoever, um, but we'd like to come to that maybe a little bit before 60%, okay. uh, just to kind of show, perhaps show you progress. I think that'd be a really good idea. Okay. Well, all this refund is really pretty exciting. Yeah. It's going to be done. Good. Well, I mean, you guys think that Are we going to chunk it out? Are you just going to have each section? Or are you going to have layers? The plans layers? you mean? Yeah. Um, okay. It'll be full hardscape set, which will have a plan layout, uh, the grade, finished grading, and then um, and then all of the details will be drawn vertically, and then we'll have structural engineering for all, you know, anything that requires structural engineering. Um, and then we'll do have the lands, landscape plans and irrigation plans. So it'll it's be very one, similar to, one the, to the streetscape and construction plans that you've seen, except for just be part details. Very similar. I'd play that out. Yeah. Yes, we're excited about that too. It's very. I mean, I, I'll tell you, we're very excited. About that. I mean, I think Is this going to be on the cover of your telephone book? I have very, very likely. It'll, it'll be a big well, surprise. I think everybody loves everybody. Yeah. I don't have a problem. We'll look at our schedule and we'll get back to the city manager yes, and talk to our schedule and the rules. We made some promises to him across the country. I just have a small request. The, the things that impact me the most, and I don't need it right now, but of course gets to 60%, I just want everybody to please be in a position to firm up the water's edge. Everything that's happening here, because what is happening at the water's edge is different from the set of drawings that we have right now. I have a little bit of time to go to the contractors, go to the permitting stage, but at some point in time, we just got to say, okay, the water's edge isn't going to change. And everything that happens inside, water's edge to what we call back of curve, I'm going to say that, that can be fluid. I don't need that right now. I just, I just need some fixed points. Water's edge, back of curve. Oh, does anybody have an issue with water's edge? The design development drawings, the hardscape layout will be pretty final. I mean, it'll show, it'll be wall locations, it, you know, all of what I call the horizontal work will be pretty final and we'll know, we'll know where the wall is and how the walls are stepping and all of that. And we haven't affected the pond volume at all. We've simply eliminated the steps. Um, and we'll get the next part of I think that is. I don't need it right now. Right. Because
what you're doing, you're basically taking two two-foot walls and maybe one one-foot a four-foot wall exactly. in a little different configuration. So I'm not anticipating a huge financial impact on it. It's just, you know, these contractors, they like to know what's going where, maybe some geometry associated with it. Because when I do start construction, the work around the pond will be one of the very first things. I'll build the roads to get back to it so I can break heavy earth moving equipment in there. But when that happens, the work around that pond is top priority. Pond is all the tension priority. That's yeah. exactly right. And these, these excavators, they want to get them in there. They'll dig out the ponds. They'll over excavate. They'll build the retaining walls. Fill it all back in. And now we can we can we can be on good graces with the water management district and the Army Corps about draining water into it. So that'll be that's the top of the top priorities that will be constructed. Good. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That.